ethnic culture. On The Late Show, the return of Jimmy Porter, we review tonight's premiere of Deja Vu, John Osborne's sequel to Look Back in Anger. Michael Bracewell goes in search of the most famous film you can't actually see, Stanley Kubrick's Clockwork Orange. Blues from the Barrio with Lost Lobos. And more of these. Good evening. That was the first of tonight's crop of one-minute films commissioned by The Late Show and the Arts Council of Great Britain. More later. But first, the return of Jimmy Porter. Just over an hour ago, the curtain came down on the first night of Deja Vu, John Osborne's first play written for the stage in 17 years. It's a sequel to Look Back in Anger, his 1956 play which many people regard as sparking the revolution which swept through British theatre in the 50s. In a moment, I'll be talking to author and critic John La and the Observer's theatre critic Michael Coveney, who have just come back from the premiere, and to Bill Kenwright, the play's producer. But first, a look back at Look Back in Anger and its successor, Deja Vu. When Look Back in Anger opened at the Royal Court Theatre in 1956, many critics were outraged by the vituperative ranting of Jimmy Porter, the play's frustrated and angry hero. But the influential critics, Kenneth Tynan and Harold Hobson, hailed playwright John Osborne as the voice of a new generation, with its heroes bitterly funny but impotent tirades against the torpor of post-war Britain, the play overturned the polite conventions of contemporary drama. Jimmy Porter and his kitchen sink, his wife Alison and her ironing board have subsequently been elevated to the ranks of theatre legend, but the play is perhaps best remembered for introducing us to the original angry young man. Wrap it up, will you? Stop ringing those bells! There's something going mad in here! What about Mummy? How does Mummy spend her day of rest? We usually go to Thank church. Thank you, dear Vicar, for the nice, cosy sermon. And then she tramples off over better men's graves, home to an orgy of curry. Mummy and Daddy and Brother Nigel, if he's up from town. Do you know her brother Nigel? No, I don't. Well, you never heard so many well-bred commonplaces come from beneath the same bowler hat. 36 years later, Jimmy Porter is back, still sneering at the Sunday papers with his old friend Cliff, and still being watched by a young woman called Alison at the ironing board. This time, however, she is his daughter, not his wife, and she refuses to iron for any man. Preferring to be called JP these days, Jimmy has the same anarchic tendencies, but he has matured from angry young man to tetchy old one. What are you giving up for Lent? Hmm? What are you giving up for Lent? Ethnic culture. And you? The alternative service book. You don't go to church. Alternative comedy? Alternative women? Oh, gay te dansant? It should be genuine deprivation. Oh, very well. Donating to charity. You don't. I used to, street barrel organists. New Alison, what about you? The Prime Minister. <laughs> and they say the young have no hope. What do you suppose Teddy's giving up for Lent? Buggery. Steady on, JP. That's not a very Teddy sort of word. What is a Teddy sort of word? Meaningful relationships, I suppose. Make your eyes water, you mean. 
You really shouldn't say things like that in front of him. Well, behind his back? Whoops, sorry. That will be better. You know how hurt he is by words. You mean the word buggery, but not the act. Oh, come on, Lord Sandy, you more compassion in you than that. What about sodomy? There's no speaking to him in this mood. He's not really so unfeeling. Ah, oh, you, you whimsical old softy. I'm very mildly curious. Is Teddy a sodomite, or isn't he? He's one of God's creatures, and is entitled to dignity and respect from the likes of coarse ruffians like you. I have no disrespect for Teddy. He has all the charm of a Lithuanian carpet seller. The sequel to Look Back in Anger has had a troubled and widely reported journey to the stage. For more than two years, Deja Vu was rejected by a variety of theatres, including the Royal Court, where Look Back in Anger was premiered. Finally, the Liverpool Playhouse agreed to stage the play in November last year. It went into rehearsal with Peter O'Toole playing Porter, but after disagreements, reportedly about the length of the script, O'Toole left the production and the play was cancelled. Six months on, with Peter Egan heading a new cast, the play opened tonight at London's Comedy Theatre. So, after 36 years, Jimmy Porter, the man who gave British theatre its most distinctive post-war voice, has returned to cast his jaundiced eye over the foibles and failings of a new era. Now mind a duck. Now mind a Ted. After all, what am I? You're a c I am a contraflow. Pour me some more wine. I am a young couple, a young executive. You're pissed. Waiting 12 hours at the airport, I am a baggage handler on strike. I am a survey, an infrastructure. I am a mortgage wrapped about my inability to have an orgasm. A steamer, a government statistic, a gym slip mother. I am a Walkman with an inalienable right to hopes and happiness and rights. Above all, I am a right to work, to guidelines. I am a grand object of public unconcern, an unscheduled delay, a workshop of new ideas and attitudes, the sounding brass of pop and charity, the rattle, the scarf, the boot, banality and youth, the Arts Council, Kivis Britannicus scum. Deja vu. Michael Coveney, John Lyle, you're just back from the first night. If I can start... Before we bring in the play's producer, Bill Conright, if I can start by asking you, Michael, in 36 years, uh, Jimmy Porter's gone from being the arch outsider to the mainstay of the school uh, syllabus. Were you glad to see him again? Yes, very much so, because for people of my generation, he came before and he started what we now know to be the modern British theatre and to see the old man, JP, as he now calls himself, back in full flow is quite something. The, the main thing about this is that you get this renewal of invective on the British stage. Um, Jim, Jimmy Porter really didn't have any great causes apart from his, himself in the first place and what he had was a great gift of the gab and a talent for invective and that's still going strong as we know from John Osborne's autobiographies and his journalistic uh, eff effluence if you like and in this play it's there in good order there's a problem with structure and there's a slight problem with performance at the moment um, but I think the play is certainly better than most things that are on in the West End at the moment. That's not saying an awful lot, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's not a bad start. And I, was, I enjoyed the evening enormously. In fact, very much more than I expected to. John Lard, does Jimmy Porter still have anything new to say? Well, I think uh, I, I disagree with Michael to the extent that I don't think it's as good a, uh, as a play as it is... Uh, an interesting occasion to encounter this very special voice. And what seems to me interesting is that uh, between the, six, the, the, the 50s and now, the voice that was hectored the world has turned inward, and what you get is a, is a terribly sad s picture of a self... That, that what, what Jimmy Porter thought he was doing was uh, sort, of in, hit, sort of calling out of himself strength. But what that looks like now, from, from 36 years on, is uh, really denying weakness. And what, what you see is the sort of self-lacerating spirit, which is uh, fascinating to observe, but it, I think, doesn't uh, hold up as, a, as an evening of, uh, of theatre, because it's all talk. It, it assumes a lot of interest in the character of Jimmy Porter and in, in the characters from Look Back in Anger. But uh, like that first play, it is remarkably plot-free, isn't it? I mean, is that interest in the characters repaid? Can I say that the one, of the one of the problems is that Porter's voice, Porter doesn't change. Uh, 
And if you, but the two events in the play happen off stage. Uh, uh, his dog dies, and his son is uh, in, in trouble with the law. Had those characters come onto the stage, he would have had to engage them. But the point about the voice is that it's self-containing. He doesn't relate. He's locked into this sound, which really wants to just broadcast the fact that.